Well, 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 we meet again, Mr. Moki, for the last time. Hi. No, I kid. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> I just worked out. <laughs> I, you know, that is what I expected that you might be doing. So, I'll, I'll be honest. I was a little bit surprised when you mentioned that what you wanted to go over... And I think that, like, was I correct in saying that you wanted to look at versus Luigi? Yeah. So okay. I, so the reasoning is, I think it's actually very sound reasoning when I explain it. <laughs> so I did a challenge where I tanked an account all the way down to bronze, right? Mm -hmm. And I went from all the way down to bronze ranked on Slippy to top 50 in one sitting. Um. And I lost to two Luigi's. Now, granted, it was like seven hours straight. I didn't move. I'm like exhausted, whatever. But I don't know what I'm doing in that matchup. And I think it's a matchup that has clear rules. So it's one where like if I have a lesson on it and I have a couple rules in my head, then it will make it so much less scary if I actually run into a Luigi in bracket. So oh. it's sort of just like a, like a precautionary, like I really don't know what I'm doing in this matchup. And the off chance I run into one, I just want to have the framework. I look at it, and I'm like, okay, I do this, 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 you know? Gotcha. Luigi, Luigi's actually a pretty good training tool for, like, understanding a lot of things about the game. So I actually think that that's really... If you're finding that that... If that's what happened, I actually think that's a really sound reason. And not only that, we can actually probably expand this to, like, th how things work versus other characters, just spatially. Yeah. Do you yeah, have also... Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, sorry, we I haven't been doing too many. I've been super checked out on Melee uh, the last, like, month or so. I've been taking, like, a big break. Good. Um, like, I've just been, like I said, I've been, like, working out. I've been, like, doing a lot of stuff with my girlfriend because she moves back at the end of next month to Vancouver. Uh -huh. um, I've just been, like, I've been doing, like, singing lessons. I've been doing Mario 64. I've been doing, like, it's, like, the first time in my life I feel like I'm, like, not just a Melee player. Like, I have all these other things I'm doing, too. Um and since July, there weren't any tournaments. I've just said, fuck it. I'm just going to go, like, all in doing all this other shit. Um, no, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Why would I have a problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> like... I'm, I'm, just, I mean, I'm just saying because I haven't been, like, going to lessons and stuff. But I am now with SmashCon coming up soon. And then the end of the year, there's, like, pretty consistent tournaments, it seems. I'm, I'm going to be doing, like, a lot more Melee shit. Um, cool. So. If I mean, like, and if that involves me, I'm, you know, I'm always thrilled to have you. So... I'm happy, but I'm also even happier that you are taking control of your life in a way that like that, that has value to you. And if these lessons aren't necessarily a part of that during part of that, I have like then we're good. Like Moki, I'm happy yeah. for you. Your life is like being sounds more full. It sounds more well rounded. These are wonderful things. Yeah. So yeah, let, no, let... <laughs> I'm very very happy with it. I've, I've, it feels so much better it's just yeah i also have not really played melee in like weeks <laughs> so I, i'm gonna do some crunching for smash con if it doesn't go my way it doesn't but there's like a bunch of other tournaments so there's yeah. always a ne there's always a next biggest tournament yeah so with that with that said let's get cracking so uh how do you foresee this being useful like do you want to go over like the vods perhaps and do some analysis or like do you want to like do you have a luigi a good luigi you can play or like what's like how do you foresee a, what do, what do you think will work best for you here um i don't think it really even matters if we like look at the sets i played on stream or if I, we just look at, like, another, like, Fox Luigi set or, like, sure. even if we just talk over, like, rules. Like, basically what I am looking for is just to have some, like, very clear, like, notes and rules on the matchup. And then I can, like, yeah, I, like, I can I can find a Luigi to play um, once I have those rules and, like, fuck around with it a bit. But oh, I just to, be, have some oh, to have top one, like, player privilege. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's lucky. Yeah. All right. This is uh, my favorite set versus Louis, uh, Fox Luigi of all time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's dig into this. Sorry, Eddie Mexico. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, because I just need the basic stuff, and then I can, like, think about it and, like, I'll try to apply it and, like, fuck around with it, like in a game myself you know okay I so think. actually there's an there's a let's do a demonstration because i think that like there's a there's an easier way to convey some of these ideas so let me open slippy real quick let me open um my game real quick and we will get down and cracking so there are two fundamental spacings that you need to know in this game to pressure effectively and i know that you know this a lot of this will be review for you so like whatever but mm -hmm. bear with me so, 
Uh, let's do frame advantage. Let's do fast. Let's let's do frame advantage. And do we need anything else? Fast fall timing, sure. And then we'll do L cancel, sure. Why not? So, if we take Fox here, and I'm actually just going to turn the music off so it's like a little clearer. All right, you can hear me loud and clear, right? Yes. Fantastic. So let's go in. Let's go like use our lovely and talented Luigi here. And let's talk a little bit about pressure, about pressuring this uh, this asshole. Um, what do you think? What do you think the rules are of attacking this guy when he's shielding and crouching? Uh, I'm not really sure. Like, I know the thing is, if I hit him when he's shielding, he's gonna slide really far away still, right? Okay. Like he still slides. Um, is that good or bad? I don't. Is that good or bad? Uh, I feel like it's kind of just neutral. Like, I'm not going to be getting, like, a ton of, like, super shield pressure. Like, I'm not going to get, like, a ton of, like, hits on him if I hit his shield. But, like, it just pushes him far back, and that can be good. Yeah. So why do you think it's neutral? Um, well, I feel like a lot of the time with, like, shield pressure, you're looking to get, like, some kind of, like, hit. Whether, like, you do, like, a like a back air shine grab or, like, an air shine grab. Where you, like, just try to, like, pressure the shield and get, like, a shield poke or something. I feel like it's not going to happen as much with Luigi. True. Let me ask you something, though. Do we have to get that hit in order for... We don't, a... no. Why is that? Yeah. What if, like, what happens if we don't... What happens if we're just standing here? He doesn't have much out of shield, right? Well, no. Like, if we just both, like, if we just hit his shield and, like, we just wait, then what happens to him eventually if he doesn't do anything? Uh... Well, like, the shield breaks or he has to, like, just move. Yeah, exactly. The shield breaks. So, like, the shield breaks. So we are in advantage state. We don't technically have to do anything. The reason yeah, for yeah. that... So, like, and the reason I bring this up is because we are making it actually very difficult for him to know what he's supposed to do when we go for, like, block strings like this. Because what we are doing is we are covering his like the zones that he can attack us from let me ask you like if we up tilt his shield here what can he punish that with uh nothing right so we can attack his shield for free with impunity he can't punish us and we have the advantage like what and what act what can he do to exit his shield how long does any of his actions to exit shield take i don't know like frame stuff but it takes a bit because he has to like wave dash or jump out, but jumping out isn't good because he's so floaty. Right. So jumping out is bad because he's floaty. Wave dashing. I'll I'll do the. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the frames because like I can. So you yeah. know how it's he keeps saying negative five, negative two, negative three, negative four, yeah. like that kind of thing. So a wave dash out of shield is jump squat. In Luigi's case, that's four plus ten for the wave land. Yeah. So that means that we are plus nine. Like, we're plus nine on him if he has to move in order to hit us. So we are insanely oh. advantaged. Because, like, if we take the math of, like, the worst ones I'm doing, like that negative five, and then compare that to a wave dash, which would be, like, 14, we're still up yeah. a bazillion. So this is, like, this concept of, like, we have to... The, the idea... We teach shield pressure really, really badly in this game because you have two shield pressure stances, really. You have ones like this where, like, you're close to them at the end and you do have to, like, frame trap them with the shine because, like, we're close to their immediate out of shield options. That makes sense to you, right? Yeah. But you also have ones where you're just keeping your distance like this, which is what Sheik, Falcon, Jig... Like, not Sheik. Sheik kind of frame traps, but, like, you have, like, Jigglypuff, Falcon... Uh, Marth sometimes, um, like characters like that do. Yeah. This. Ganondorf, he does. They do things like this, where they just space the aerial. This is insanely effective against Luigi because he has to then figure out how he gets out of shield. And a lot of times, the best way for him to do it is to go there, and then he plays the entire game in the corner. Yeah, no, that makes sense because I think I try to treat him too much like a normal character when I'm hitting him. Like, I've never thought this through. Like, I knew that it slid, but I never really thought of, like, the implications of it. Like, I still am like, okay, back air shine. But it's like, why the fuck am I shining? I can do, like, anything else. Yeah, the shine honestly restricts your options. Because, like, if we just land here, then, like, after we shine, we have to do something with that shine. But, like, that gives him a cue that he can, like, play around. 
But if we just yeah, do this like, back air up tilt, like back air up tilt, back air into like another back air, back air weight, and look at yeah, how we- Yeah, I feel like oftentimes the shine misses. Like do a back air shine. Mm -hmm. Like here. Like it's not gonna hit there and he might be able to like even just like catch me slipping, doing something. Bingo. And, yeah. the and it gets even more exaggerated when we turn infinite shield off because like as the shield shrinks, so does our odds of hitting him. Like, see what I mean? Yeah. No, that actually makes so much sense. What other characters have low traction where this might come up against? Like Ice Climbers. Think good characters. I think Ice Climbers were pretty good. I agree, but there's a there's <laughs> there's one a very there's a very good one that we have trouble with sometimes, like you specifically at the top level, that like, you know, come on, who who has low traction of the top tiers? Uh I mean, my go-to in my head is Marth. Bingo. Yeah. Absolutely. Think about all the times that Cody doesn't go for Shine after like his after he hits Mar Zane's shield. This is part of why. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like in my head way too much. I'm just like, okay, I hit Shine, hit Shine. Right. But like, what we learn like, here from this type no. of like attack stance is even with Nair, you don't necessarily have to do it. Like, what the hell is he gonna like? Let's have him do some attacks at a shield. Let's for for funsies, um, shield escape grab. Like, do you think that he's gonna get us? No. Okay, that one he did. But like, we can beat that by like walking away from him if we want to. Yeah. Or like dashing away. You know. You know what I mean? Or like even jumping again probably does it. Yeah. Then we get like a yeah. Then we get like the clean punish. <laughs> like okay, so it takes more skill to hit the up air that I don't have. But the whole point of this is that like when you're in the when I kind of divide shield pressure for this reason into like two zones that are very powerful. So you have the one that's like this where like it's all about like the frame trap once you get in on them. Yeah. And then you have the other one, which is all about, and like this one is all about like you're actually trying to beat like their out of shield option with like whatever you're going for. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the spectrum, you have like I call that the in hit shield pressure like style. So like in you're in the out of shield immediate um, counter attack hit zone. So against characters like Samus, this is like what we do like um in this against Bowser and Samus and stuff. This is why we do stuff like that. Because we're, like, playing to rock, paper, scissors with their, like, out of shield option. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. like, we have to frame trap them in some way. Either by shielding their attack if they're more of a hit style out of shield character. Or by, like, um, stuffing the shield grab um, or evading it once we get in here. Yeah. But for this one, when we're already spaced perfectly... It's more about, like, how we follow up on the shield to maintain advantage, to just, like, we're, it's like, we're putting our foot very gently on the opponent, and just yeah, resting it like there. In Luigi's spot, too, because of, like, the shield stun and stuff and timing mix-ups, too, like, it, it's actually low-key kind of hard for him to, like, move out of this, like, well. Yeah, it is. And all it is is, like, if this up-close stuff is us, like, putting, like, a lot of pressure on their... Like, if the up-close stuff is us putting, like, a lot of pressure on their, like, on our foot, like, quickly, and then having to, like, exert it and then remove it... Like, we're putting a ton of force down on them, like, quickly, and then, like, removing it. Um, or, like, following through on it, and then we have to usually get out of there. Because, like, with, like, especially with, like, options like Jab and Shine, like, with how they work, a lot of times there's a need for us to back off or, like, kind of, like, br like change our rhythm after the fact, right? Yeah. But, but when we're doing this, the nice thing about this is the rhythm is slow because we're safe innately. Yeah. We are intrinsically safe here because if we just do nothing and they do nothing, then we win this interaction. But when we're as close as this, they have way more things that they can they, they can push buttons and just hit us. But we're like, when we're this far, they can't. They have to do a movement first, which means we can cover the movement. Yeah, that makes sense. So with this all in mind, with that part of the lesson out of the way, I want us to look at what SFAT does. Yeah. Because okay. this is like, this is, I think, like the best Luigi Fox play. Some of the best Luigi Fox play of all time. Ignore, like, I understand the metagame has advanced in, like, the last two years, so fair enough. Like, yada, yada, yada. Get all, yeah, get all that crap. Yeah, that stuff I can account for by just being, like, a good player. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so, still, like, fundamental rules and limitations that Luigi has and stuff. True. And you can see, like, how SFAT is already, like, playing to those. Like, look at this up B angle, right? Like, yeah. after this. Because he's, like, he knows that Luigi can't go above this point. So he's just angling his up B ex just enough to deal with it. He's praying, off, pl he's praying off Eddie's low air mobility extremely well. Yeah. Takes his lasers. I don't. I don't actually like those lasers as much as I used to. I think they're kind of like whatever. I I agree. Yeah. But like I I think that like the the fact that he gets something for I think they're just meant to like dictate the you know, the game. But I think that he could do less of them or just get into a less lasery mode. Um, yeah. But again, we have him going over the ledge hop aerial zone. And I like that he's I like I like that he's covering the wave dash forward with his like with his normals. I think he's too close, but you can see that he's like occupying this really annoying spot like near him. Um a lot once he gets in. He's not really looking for anything like difficult to hit, covers the wave dash forward zone, gets the back airs. Like this I think this whole section here is very well done. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Takes the up ear kill. Yeah, that was like just amazing. This whole section was yeah. It, it, so what do you what what stands out to you about like how this was done? Like I think just like knowing, like there he just abused the fact that Luigi's floaty as fuck. Like when he forward through him, mm -hmm. he's like, okay, I'm gonna throw these lasers out and then just like, you can really just like wait and see what he's gonna do. And Luigi, how I, I feel like it's not amazing, but like, you can really like stuff him out when he's on the edge as well i just feel like i don't know he did like the very basic like stuff very well i guess like of uh like ledge trapping or whatever luigi so th that's in so it's interesting you bring that up so luigi has a good galint the problem is he doesn't have a good way to like pr to like access it you see how he has to get off the ledge super quickly because he's yeah. so floaty like him him fast falling off the edge and then trying to come up with like a double jump to refresh and align himself for a good good for good galint is actually yeah. not trivial it's i think and i think this is this is like this here is very good positioning by s fat so like look at look yeah. at the spacing he keeps when he's in the corner like if eddie tries to like go to the edge and refresh to like set up um a ledge dash on for like the 11 or 12 galint that luigi can get none of it works and I think that's really the beauty of what he's doing. Um, in terms of this, do you know how to DI Luigi's throws? It's behind, like, you know it's behind yeah. him, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. That was beautiful. Wow. Like, even the fact that he, like, fucked that up at the start, too, and he still just kept it going. Like, he missed that, but he still... That's crazy. I love this back air. Like... The back air he does in the like after this, like the one that yeah. he sets him off stage, this shine double jump back air, like the undershot, like this undershoot is so perfect because it basically ensures it forces Eddie's hand on the double jump and then he's dead. There's nothing he can do. Like, yeah, like the only thing he could have done is like air dodge maybe, and then like it's a bit of a harder thing than the up smash, but even that is like it, you're not in a good spot if the fox doesn't fuck up. Well, the thing is, is like all we have here. This is what I. This is what I'd consider a win condition, because like at this point, the stock is won for S Fat because all of the things we're suggesting, none of them actually solve this problem. They're yeah. all just like we can make it harder, but we can't actually stop Fox from up smashing us here. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's like the real the real beauty of this. You can see why I really like this set for like assessing this. Yeah, like, the way that he's, like, like, the ranges he's playing in are actually perfect for Luigi. If he had gotten, if he had gotten oh the short God. hop he wanted there, he was actually dead. <laughs> like, that's so crazy. <laughs> I think he still, like, takes this without losing one. Oh. Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah, Esfat's playing like amazing this set too. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like even just like go back, like when he did the shine turnaround up B on the edge too. Like that's like the kind of shit you do when you're like so dialed in. Like he like put himself off stage like somewhere, and mm -hmm. then he like does the the grab edge. I, 
I don't remember where it is. I think it's a bit... I just weird. wanted to point out this short hop up air. Oh, yeah. Because, like, imagine he hits that, like, but it's so perfect because it goes, like, how does Luigi, like, what are Luigi's panic options? They're, like, it's his down smashes, that's the big one, and, like, it's a low, or his grab, and, like, like, they're both low. Like, they both hit kind of low on his body. So this goes, like, around them perfectly. Like, it's just, oh, it's so good. Also, covering, like, the, like, covering the movement out of shield, like... Once he gets behind him, like, he's a he's asking the question, like, how do you exit your shield in a way that's relevant? Yeah. Because, like, what, you want to go back in the corner after you've earned the- after you find- like, you want to give up all your stage control- all your bid for stage con your entire bid for stage control after you've fought out of the corner for, like, 30 seconds? Like, probably not, but, like, if you go into Fox, you just die, <laughs> like- and then, like, yeah, that shine, that that's the up you're talking about, right? Yeah, like it's not like the craziest thing, but just like the awareness. Yeah, it's like I feel like a lot of the time in the moment, people are gonna like immediate double jump and get owned. They'll double jump back air, and then like yeah. Luigi will hit them with this forward smash, and they'll feel really stupid. Yeah, like that's the kind of thing where when I'm doing that, I'm like, okay, I'm like actually like dialed in and focusing, you know? I know exactly what you mean. Like that's that's good play. Like that's yeah. that's truly like elite level play. Yeah. It's not, like, what, something Ryan said a long time ago that I think that holds very true is that it's not so much... This isn't a game about doing the right, the good things right once. It's a game about doing the little things right all the time. Yeah. And I think that that is, like, a really good... Like, what we're seeing from SFAT is a really good example of this. He does... The F, FD does not look good for Eddie in this game. Like, in this set. I don't know what you, what you think of this, but, like... Oh, like, that's something I should write down too. Actually, go back. Mm -hmm. I noticed he like did the back air right here, and then he just like cc'd and like okay. Yeah, and I feel like I'm so scared of hitting Luigi at low percents. Sometimes. Never be afraid of hitting Luigi. Except when he's in the air and like comp low percent combo, but like you'll notice that Sfat is like still doing a really good job of like not overextending on those. Yeah. And I actually, something I want to call out about this up smash, let's assume Lou Eddie doesn't, like, wave dash here. With how, with how, with where S fat it would hit him, he just goes onto the edge anyway, and it's so hard for him to get up and punish that. Yeah, like, he probably ends up, like, jumping up with a down air, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and, like, that's not even, like, the worst thing at this percent. I don't even know if he can necessarily because of the pushback on the on the on hitting Luigi's shield. I don't even know if he can necessarily get the down air. I think that Lu yeah. I think that Esfat gets his shield out first, but I could be wrong on that. Fair. I think the point is is that like even with like also sac great use of the Sakurai angle. Yeah, because the thing that's shocking me in this is just how much he actually is. Just spamming aerials. Not spamming, but you know what I mean. Like, he's just, like, he's just hitting aerialing him. so much. And I feel like that's, like, I'm scared to do that when I play also, against Luigi. This, this conversion. Oh, amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> does the Mewtwo King lasers just to take the seven? Like, I actually really like the choice of the lasers here. Because, like, you just, you're at 90. You don't really want to screw around with Luigi's, like, stuff. I, I think you could make a case that, like, because he double jumps... Um, to, like, on this one. Actually, no, he still has his double jump. So, yeah, no, I think that that's perfect. Because, like, getting underneath Luigi, like, when he still got his jump and his down B and everything, like, and trying to, like, sweep the Nair, is, like, kind of hard if they don't just bite, if they don't just, like, autopilot the Nair. Zuppy Shine, for good measure. Like, he's just, he's just ruining him. This is like this is a clinic. Also, more near into shield. Like even at these low percent, see what I mean? Yeah. Cuz the other thing here is that the cool thing about that cross up near is that remember, Luigi's down smash hits in front of him first, right? So the window that he's like accepting for getting punished there is actually later. Cuz like it hits like 5 to 8 first and then like or 5 and 6 and then 8 and 9 behind him. So it's yeah. like, it, he, he's not, it's not, he's not actually risking, like, he's not actually risking much by doing that. 
And then Eddie finally takes the stock. But, like, the damage is done. And look at, like, freaking forward tilt is a pressure tool because of this. Because you can't shield, <laughs> like, he goes too far. <laughs> yeah. And that... he probably could have down tilted that, too, after. Yeah. The shield grab. Or just, like, or run forward up smash. Like, he's just, he can do anything. I just realized he did a stock glitch, too. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's don Donkey Kong. <laughs> Honestly, like, Donkey Kong, more Donkey Kong, I, I... The thing about these characters, the thing about low-traction characters is that a lot more is safe on them than you might think, and they naturally yeah. put themselves into the far into the far spacing, even when we just do normals on them. So, like, yeah. we have way more freedom of what we can go for on their shield than we might, than we, than versus, like, a low traction, like, a high traction yeah. character. Well, like, that start of the game is actually, like, that's classic. I do that constantly against Luigi, and I'm like, fuck. Like, he does, like, the, I think, something shine. Mm hmm. Like, he does it there, drill shine. And he gets nothing, and it's like, obviously, you're gonna do it sometimes just because you're Fox. It's damage building, puts him in the corner, it's okay. And it's like, if you're not 100% sure on, like, what you can do after the drill, Shine is pretty safe a lot of the time. Um, but, like, it just, I do it so much, and SFAT has done it, like, once, you know? <laughs> he's, like, he's done it, like, when he's, when he's obligated to do it because Luigi's at, like, 12 or, like, 0, then, yeah, like, yeah. he will do it. But, like, the second he can, like, start going for back airs and nares and stuff, he, he does. Like, he's just, he pulls the trigger on it, like, right away. Because why would we do like why would we do like drill shine to nothing when we can like back air to stuff? And yeah. like back air, even if we don't get stuff after it, it does fifteen damage. Like, like 50... that shine was. I like how he went for that. Fuck. Mhm. Mm and then he Ooh. takes his up airs, doesn't overextend, doesn't get hit by the Luigi bullshit coming down. <laughs> like he's just he's so locked in. Yeah. And look at how he does... Okay, so this is what I mean by, like, the, the, the pressure stance. So, like, look at what he... We're going to slow this down. Look at what he does here. Because this is, like... This is, like, fundamental to this matchup. So we're going to back up a bit to when he hits. Boom. Boom. Right? The fuck does Luigi do? <laughs> yeah. And now he has to recover. Light shields so that that like so nothing like that shield like ensures that if he holds the charge and like misfire and aims at him like nothing happens. He kind of I don't like how he gives up the edge guard here. Like I think that was kind of like a little sketchy. But like you can't art like compared to like all the things he's doing well. Like yeah. And I I don't blame him because at the end of the day he's at eighty four. So it takes so little to find the vertical kill. Like this yeah. is like and this is a it's a nair and a jab away from like lethal, like yeah. And he's already up four stocks to three and two zero oh in the set. It's just like you don't really need to be like doing the hard stuff in that spot. You don't need to be. Because... Yeah, you like you know what we can t we can kind of like oh my god that punish. <laughs> yeah. Because when when was Genesis nine? Which one was that? Was that the one last year? Uh, I don't remember. Genesis nine was. Yeah. January 2023, yeah. Yeah. So it blows my mind. Like, I guess SFAT was, like, still kind of competing around here. Or is this when he, like, was gone? I think this is when he was gone. Uh, but he... It's just crazy, because, like, I'm seeing him do a, a bunch of, like, newer stuff. Like, a lot of these up airs are, like, newer ideas. Or, like, people would do these up airs before, back in the day, but it's, like, so much more common now. Yeah, so one thing I want to point out here, and that I'll actually make a diagram for, because I think that this is, like, a pretty useful concept, because I don't really see you go for this particular opening, but it is quite strong. Um, and I think it would be a good addition for a bunch of your matchups. So, like, we have, like, Asphat move to this point while Eddie is falling from about... No, while Eddie is falling down at about this trajectory. And I want to, like... I want to make it clear that, like... Eddie's hitbox right now, if we were to, like, put that on his character, is covering this space, basically. Not exactly, but, yeah. like, close enough. So what SFAT is doing that's really good is then he's, like, moving through the, through his character, with his character. What he's doing is he's moving to this point here, um, like, from here to here. Then he's, like, arcing over that. 
like and then attack like arcing over and attacking on top like on yeah. top of like where he's gonna land so by the time eddie lands this is completely bypassed and because of that he's able to attack with his most powerful combo starter like because normally like this is a really difficult up air to hit but because of how he's like set himself up he's able to like like the fact that he's like using a move that's like up here on his body doesn't even yeah. matter because he's just, it's all about like how he's aligned himself with Eddie with Eddie's hip in relation to Eddie's hitbox with his fall. Yeah. So he's just wafting and here. And it's easy to react to because he's Luigi and he's in the air for so fucking long. So it's like pretty easy to actually like recognize that you can go for that stuff. Right. And I think that this is like a concept that's really important versus Marth and Sheik as well. Marth, Sheik, Jigglypuff, and Peach, I think that this comes up, this kind of thing comes up a lot, especially when they're wafting around with their, like, high-priority pokes. Like, it, we've all seen, like, Marth, like, kind of, like, ho like, kind of, like, hover in the air with his, like, when it, before he goes for his Nair, and then fall quickly. Well, it's during that hovering that you have the opportunity to set up this kind of play. Um, mm -hmm. same thing, same thing with Sheik when she goes for her bears and stuff. It's a little trickier on them because their moves are better, but, like... Yeah, you can totally see how... I think that you can totally see how this would apply for, to them. Yeah. And he's just all over him. Yeah, that was not good, but again, he's doing so much good. Like, the... Like, okay, so, like, what's the not good part? So this is... This is... This probably needed to hit the other way. Um, the correction here... It was, it was the shine. It was the shine when he hits him off here. Ah, like, yeah, that yeah, is, yeah. like that is never gonna hit in a million years no matter what happens <laughs> honestly i didn't even see the shine so like yeah this is my bo like me like boomer boomer genes activate but it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's also not a big deal everyone does those kind of things occasionally i like the choice to up smash there yeah it's like a little thing but like like you said like it's I feel like a lot of people, like, go for the shine there and give him a chance to, like, come back with a misfire. And Asphat's just like, nope, I looked at the percent. I don't even know if Eddie takes this stock. I don't think he does, but maybe he does. Maybe this is, maybe he only gets two. Oh my god. Nope, he does not. Oh my god. Okay. He's like trying to get cute on him. <laughs> <laughs> that is the S fat. <laughs> oh no, he does take it. Okay. So he only got like, you know, three stocked, three stocked, and like JV two, JV three stocked. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Luigi. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eddie. I'm sorry. Like, it looks so hard to beat this. I don't know what you do. You're really good. Esfet's also very good. Sometimes you just... Sometimes people are just good. <laughs> yeah. No, that was... He... Man, I miss Esfet competing so much. I know what you mean. Exactly. He was, like, just so nice to have in a tournament. Like, it just, like, made the viewing experience, like, so much better, I feel. I miss Zacharoni as well. I would like to oh, see Oh, he's more. a nice guy. Mm -hmm. I remember at one of the summits, I walked in the bathroom. I just saw him, like, smoking up in the summit bathroom. <laughs> and, he's, and he says in his fucking ass fat voice, the sup. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. That is the most Zach yeah. thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> so, in terms, if we had to formalize this into some rules, let's figure this out together. So yeah. I think that like one of the things that we want to like we, one of the things one of the distances one of the situations I think that we want to be aware of and like let's grab an image for it so that we can have something to refer to. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say it's like I'd say the nares on this stock like the way like no uh, no it was the stock before like the way that he like just pressured him like super hard with nair um, once he had once he was like near like once Eddie was in front of him basically. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's when he lands here, or maybe it was the first stock. I think it might have actually been the first. Oh, no, it's this bit. So, like, yeah. after he hits this nair um, on the shield, understanding that he doesn't actually have to do anything. Yeah. Because, like, with where Luigi goes eventually, 
Yeah, so Luigi goes too far for us to be able to shine. So I would say let's capture this one. So some, so this would be, so what are some things that we could do after this Nair that would be generally quite good for us to do? Uh, do you mean against Luigi or against normal characters? Against Luigi. Against Luigi, you can wait, you can try to up tilt, um, you can try to see, like, if he's gonna, like, wave dash out, uh, ahead, you can put out another aerial. Yeah. Um. Because the idea here is that Luigi is going to move into, like, this spot at the end. Yeah. Like Luigi move Luigi moves like around here at the end um after tr no after no after sh um shield stun. Yeah. Um after SS and then Fox is going to finish around here. Or like yeah. maybe actually he'll probably be in place it's in there. It's probably not drifting much. So with this distance between the two of you, there's no threat of count like important things to note. So there's no threat of counter hit. Yeah. No CH from Luigi. From Luigi. In addition to that, so this means that we can no um so there's so we can go for, we can go for you no know, go for bigger hits. You no know, for um bigger you no know, for bigger hits. Like we don't need to shine. I think that's yeah. like the biggest thing that like we need to learn recognize here is this yeah. is not needed. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and I think that like what we can do, what we can also re recognize here is the shield is bigger than the character themselves, and I know that we've gone over that before, but like just to re like what just to reiterate, like the shield Luigi's shield is like this big relative to his body, but his actual frame is significantly smaller. Like the actual space that he occupies is here, right? Yeah. So that means his gr where does his grab hit? His grab is hitting like on his body like here yeah so like this is a lot of distance between like once we're standing we're gonna be like here ish so this is a lot of distance between the two of us it's probably more like here we'll fix that box i point this out just mainly as a reminder that like characters and shields their shield because the shield is bigger than they are we don't need to necessarily need to overreact um when we're when we're hitting them a lot yeah. of times it's good and it is good enough for us to simply vibe where we are because they are not actually at in we're not actually in danger of being punished and this will prevent us from doing shines that we don't need to or jabs that we don't need to yeah because a lot of times the temptation is we're, we're going to like jab here so that's it but like we're actually just extending our hitbox out and making ourselves more susceptible to it so i'd say that like jab is also like jab is also not needed yeah yeah so this i think this this is a good this is a good thing to capture yeah i agree yeah aside from that i think one of the beauty like one of the big beauties of like fighting luigi is that like you don't actually have that like i th I know people like think that there's a lot of rules to this one but i think that like as aside from like the don't like go for like like don't go for too much aside from don't go for too much i don't think there actually are that many rules for this one which is like yeah. which is kind of nice one thing i will say though is let's talk about this up throw thing because I think that this is another thing that, like, this is a thing that we could, like, do a better job with here. Um, so it's not, maybe it is the first stock. No, it's the third stock that where it happens. So, after he up throws him. Because a lot of times, like, the rule of thumb is, like, you can't go for up throw up air against this guy. Yeah. But, like, what we can see here is, we can, it's just different. Yeah. Um, so how do you describe what's the spacing that you think let we need to like like when do how do we set up this up throw up here would you say like with this jump trajectory uh i don't know how to put it into words i can like visualize it okay um so i'll draw the diagram but you help you're gonna provide corrections okay yeah so what height I'm thinking that we're like timing Luigi to hit to like we're timing this up air to hit when Luigi is about here. Yeah. Okay. So like, when... yeah, because he's gonna like fall onto it. You're saying like we're gonna like jump when he's around there, right? 
Yeah, like we're, we're yeah. well, we're gonna ha yeah. So we're like we're gonna jump around. Like this is jump. Like as he's reaching here, so like as he approaches this, we jump. And I would yeah. say that we do the up air so that where where would you say the up air is actually hitting? So if we had to do the hit line, I'd say it's around here. Yeah, I'd say that roughly, maybe a tiny bit lower. Ah, that's probably actually where. Yeah, I'll a tiny bit lower. Where. What about here? So like here? Uh, it like a maybe. little bit higher. Actually, probably because I'm trying to. I'm just trying to visualize like how Fox's up throw or not his up throw, how his up air looks, like how high he gets from the short hop and whatever. So it's probably actually more where you had it. I actually movie. think you're... I, I would disagree. I think you're actually right. Because, like, remember, Luigi's body is going to, like, realign itself to be like this. Yeah. So, like, when he's falling, we're, like, really trying to, like, hit him when his box is, like, here. Yeah. So, like... And then at this point, like, it's not so much that, like, he's here. Like, it's like, we want to hit him as his box is, like, passing through it, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then our up air would be, like, hitting... Our second hit up air, we want it, like, here, basically. And the yeah. first hit, like, the first hit is, like, here. Or maybe, like, maybe these need to be, like, adjusted a little higher. Like, second hit, like, maybe about... Uh, here. And then first hit, maybe around here. Yeah. Cool. I would I would agree with that. I Does think he beat that, out his down air by doing this. Is how it happens. I think that the idea is that we have the hitbox out on this side of him, where his down air doesn't occupy, because his down air is like his down air hits a different part of him. So like his down air hits like here, on his body, right? It's like down and in front of him. So I think the idea is that we already have the hitbox out. His down air comes out around the same time that these come out. So we're just like we're. We're, we're testing his timing. I think he could theoretically down here through this. But he'd have to, like, know that we're doing it this way. In fact, I think that is, in, that is what, what Eddie is going for. Okay, no, he goes for Nair. We can't react. We, like, we're, we agree we can't react to that Nair, right? Oh, crap. Okay, I think we're back. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think that down air could theoretically contest this based on what it based on how they're lined up. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Cause you can see that he's going for Nair here. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. So like what we're doing is Which we're I'm not... curious about. I wonder why he nared there instead of down air. I think this is a panic I think this is a panic button in case SFAT comes up more aggressively. I guess, yeah. Because he probably... Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, because if he comes up in full hop nearest, then, like, this wins. So the short, like, but if he, if he like, yeah. So it's kind of like you've got a, you've got a bit of a 50-50 here, I think. Yeah. But, again, when you're up by a lot, this is a completely reasonable 50-50, especially for the payoff. Um... I also am not totally convinced that down air just straight up wins here, because down air is a pretty slow move. Um, there's a there's a chance. I feel like if it's timed well, like he definitely could time it to do it. Oh yeah, I agree with that. I'm but, just not sure how realistically he times it that well in that spot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it's like I like I agree. It's one of those like I agree with you. I just think that like I'm valuing the reward higher, and you're valuing like the risk a little bit more. Like pot like a little bit higher which makes sense you've got more experience on fox than me so you're like you definitely have had more like deaths in like crazy situation in crazy like positions like that so 
I, I think that this is my chic brain going like, reward, kill him, make him die. And you're like, eh, like not, yeah, I'm, I'm not against that, but like, let's be a little bit careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like both are valuable in different moments. Agreed. Agreed. No, like far be it, like again, you're you're great at this game. So far be it from me to tell you that you're wrong on that. But um yeah, cuz like this is this is this is this is not like a fact thing. This is just like like we both agree on the facts. Like up air can win there, but down air can also win there. Yeah. Um Luigi's under a lot of pressure. I think that the really scary part for Luigi is like if he goes for the down air, like what if we just don't attack him? Like what if we just move on to the other side of him and like up tilt, right? Cuz it's just yeah. Like, to me, that's, like, t the most terrifying thing for, like, me as the Luigi here is what if the fox calls me out? Like, like I feel like if we, like, if we just don't go for this up here and we get on this side of him and, like, just turn, like, up tilt and pop him up, like, we still get this whole combo, which is, like, the horrifying part for as the Luigi player. Yeah. Um... I don't think there's a good, but like at the same time, I don't think there's a good solution for Luigi here. Like this is just kind of one of his character weaknesses. So, mm. yeah. On that note, let's talk a little bit about sharking him in general, because I think that this is like a good example of like how we can like build a little bit more of like an even better rule set. So like here, let's take this like let's get the best picture of Luigi near we can. So right here, cool. So. I want to still, so something inter you might not know about Luigi is that he's actually pretty biased in terms of where his good hitboxes come out. So there is a massive bias to the front of him. So what I mean by that is it, his near hitboxes are like, he's got a little one here and I'll actually, yeah. we'll actually fill these in. So fill, we'll do the same color and opacity. So then he's got another one here, but this one's actually bigger. So like, <coughs> yeah. If he was going to down air, <coughs> sorry, no worries, no worries. If he was going to down air, um, let's see here. Oh, I see. So that's how you turn them. If he's going to down air, then like it hits kind of at this trajectory, like down and below yeah. him. But you'll notice there isn't a whole lot behind him. Because, like, his back air hits here. So if his yeah. hit, if his hit box, like, if his hurt box is, like, this kind of, like, is kind of, like, this shaped. Yeah. Um, then you'll notice there's a huge void of, like, vulnerability. Like, just kind of, like, innately behind, more behind him than in front of, like. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, his, hit, his hurt box, like, generally stretches like this. Um, yeah. So, like, this opening is very big. So getting behind him to, like, punish him is actually quite strong um, when it comes to, like, pressuring him. So if you if we draw a line in between him, like, a draw a line in between him just for where, like, for where he occupies, once you're on this side of the line, you're generally good. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, because even, like, if we add the other aerials, they're all, like, like his... I didn't include all the all of his aerials. Like, he still has his down B, he still has his fair, he still has his up air. But, like, we can see where those hit, and they're, like, they don't occupy... They don't cover this hurt box exposure at any point. And yeah. that's a big problem for him. So, yeah. This is why I think that, like, the way SFAT has done this is quite good. Because if we actually, like, slow down and take a look at exactly where he's hitting... Like, down here's hitting at this angle, right? Yeah. So, like, he's at kind... This is why I think that his up air is still going to probably beat it, because he's, like, kind of gotten onto the other side of him, so he's outside of the way. It's possible that this is still close enough that it gets him, but, like, I this is part of why I think this is so well done. Yeah. No, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like I have a lot of notes now to, like... I don't think you're going to lose it. Like, I think that you're going to find this matchup, even if you don't, like, even if you have, like, another, like, ranked game set where you lose or something, like, I think that you're going to find that the matchup starts to make a lot more sense, and I think that's, like, that's going to be very valuable for you. So, yeah, and I figured, like, that's why I want to do it right now when I haven't been as in depth with melee anyway, because I'm not as locked in with a bunch of melee stuff, and I'm like, I may as well just, like, do this matchup now as, like, an introduction to me getting into the game again. Uh, before I start grinding, because it's just like, like, yeah, I don't know. 
it just gives me a lot to think of i think um, that's i think that's a really good way to do it like i've been learning falco and like i it's been i find that like i have a similar like once i kind of like realize that i don't really want that i like missed being able to push advantage state it's like it's been good like having something to sink my teeth into and i think that like this can be good in the same way for the for you because it's like yeah. it's, he's a weird character you don't really fully understand him so having a fr like a concrete framework like it's very very valuable um yeah i think that like one of the things that you're going to find very fun is just the idea of like that far range spacing like as a like as a centerpiece for your pressure because in reality, I honestly think, like here, let me pull up Mango versus Mango Fox versus something. So Mango Fox SSBM. <clears throat> Mango Fox. Mango Fox versus Triff Peach Gommel. So I know that this isn't exactly, but like Mango is one of the best players in the world at doing this far range spacing thing. So I just want to yeah. like, and I think that like he pressures in a different style to how you do it. Cause like a lot of what you do is like frame trap is like insane frame trap scraps. And that's very powerful. But I think that fundamentally the like the spaced, the spacing style pressure is actually like better in a lot of ways. The yeah, reason I, I think it's better is because it's just safer. And I don't think there's anything wrong with what you're doing, but I think this like can give you a much bigger, di like a better dimension of like how you go about doing it. Now I haven't really seen him like attack Triff's shield, so maybe this isn't the best example. But there, like the way that he just gets that nair and like backs off. Um, that one he did move into him, so not the best example, but we'll see it. We'll see it. The other care player who just like really infamous for this is Hungry Box. Yeah. Um. And I think even like with even though a lot of these hits are connecting, like he's not do autopiloting the shine after the hit, which I think is like which I think is indicative of kind of like what he's going for with a lot of his like shield pressure stuff. Because a lot of times he's hitting hit Trift just as he's coming out of shield with those delayed things, but like yeah. there's no there's no confirm into shine, which makes me think that he wouldn't go for them necessarily. Um, maybe he's, maybe his reaction skills are that good though. There, like, so, like, when he's got him pressured in the corner here. So, like, this into, like, this, and how he just, like, dashes out, right? Like, he doesn't even bother going for the shine on a lot of these. Yeah. Um, and it makes it more, like, it makes it more difficult to know when he wants to go for the shine. And I know you can beat Triff, but, like, I still think that this, like, that there, look at how difficult this is for him to get out of. Yeah. And it's just a more consistent way of doing the pressure, too. Because if I'm having, like, an off day or I get nervous or something, I just start fumbling. Like, well, in the way that I do stuff. And it can be, uh, like, yeah. scary. Like, yeah, like, I, let me ask you. Let's say Mango misses the L cancel here. He doesn't. Yeah. But, like, let's say he's uh, he's in lag for another 10 frames here. Well, yeah. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. No, like, sorry, yeah. So, assuming that this is going at, like, um, yeah, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah. He would be, like, he would be out of lag here when Triff is grabbing the edge. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, it doesn't! And, <laughs> and that's my point. Like, it, I think that this, I think this will give you a lot to work with. And I think okay. that I, I'm very excited to see what you do with it because this is like a dimension of pressure that I think that has been, I think you have it, but like, I think that it's never, I don't think you've ever really, really like fleshed it out like this. And I think I, I'm really excited to see what you come up with because I think you can do, because there are, the rules are looser with this style of pressure because you don't have the need to frame trap people. I think that it's a spot where your creativity can actually really shine. Yeah. And I, I can't, and like, I feel like when we give you like the opportunity to be creative with something, usually the really, really interesting things happen. So I'm really excited yeah. to see what you come up with. Yeah, I'm excited to fuck around with it. <laughs> um, I will probably try to find a Luigi next week because I, like, even today, dude, I'm so close to getting a fucking Mario PB. <laughs> okay. So I like, I really want to do that before I start like grinding Melee hard again because I want to, I don't like, want to feel like i like wasted my opportunity to get like a really massive pb when i switch so fair enough so with Fingers that crossed. with that do you want to go off and play mario i won't be offended if we cut this five minutes short but <laughs> but is there yeah, anything you need is there anything you need from me before we go 
No, I think that's really good. I mean, I actually wrote down like a lot of like because I have those pictures, and I also wrote down some of the notes more in depth and stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I think that's good um, for me. Like, I'm probably gonna start like grinding, grinding. Uh, I, I mean, I'll probably play a session or something this weekend, and then I'm gonna start grinding, grinding next week. Amazing. Uh, do you want to? Is there any chance that you'll want to meet next week, or like at the end of this session, or do you want to like give it a bit more time to breathe? I'm good either way. I just kind of want to know. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm down if you want to try to do Friday again next week. Sure, I'll put it on cool. the books. Um, Friday around this time. That works good for me. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Moki, I will let you go, but it's always a pleasure to work with you. Um, yeah. best of luck on that PB. I hope it doesn't take you too long. And dude, thank you. Yeah, I, <laughs> dude, yesterday was actually so fucked. If I can rant for like one minute, holy fuck! Is that? Oh crazy? my god! Yeah, go ahead. People like dude. dude I was like, moments, so I was. Them. So my sum of best now is like really good mm -hmm. for what my PB is. My PB is seventeen thirty five, and my sum of best is a. Uh, I just like I golded the last level by twelve seconds. So now my sum of best is sixteen forty three. So it's like I have a lot of oh, potential. Oh, okay, got and, it. Yeah. And in the basement specifically, I have thirty-four seconds of time save. In the basement, so that's like halfway through the run, like the second half, like I have that much time, which is a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So I hit the basement yesterday, and I was already like green by eleven seconds, and I had another thirty-four seconds of potentially time save. Jesus. So I was like on like a run where like, oh, I could have done done crazy shit. Quiggles ordered Uber Eats, and the driver rings the doorbell. No! And I'm like, no! okay, whatever, it's fine. Five seconds goes by, and he rings it again. And I'm like, fuck, like, what the hell? And then I'm going to do a trick, and he starts spam ringing. So it goes like, ding, 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 oh, ding, ding, no. ding, 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 that, like... And I fucking fall, and I die. Oh, that's brutal. That's, and, that's not uh, okay. And to put it into context... That whole day, like, I was doing it for, like, two and a half hours before that. The worst runs I've had in weeks. <laughs> and then I finally had, like, the best run I've ever had in my life. And that should happen to me. Quiggles oh, is a menace. Shit. He needs to, like, yo, if, 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 if you're, if you're, if you're practice, if you're on, like, Mario, he needs to be, like, accountable <laughs> for his freaking Uber Eats. Like, this is not negotiable. Like, tell, tell him that, tell him I will shame him on Twitter <laughs> if he does not get his act together on I this. I know, because can you imagine a world where I PB'd yesterday? I'd be playing Melee today. <laughs> I know. Like, I'd be grinding. Don't I, I know it. Oh, uh, fuck. All right. But yeah, so that was my little rant. It was actually the most bullshit thing that I think has ever happened to me when I was doing that. It, oh, it's so frustrating. Ugh. Awful. But, yeah, all right. I'm going to make some food and stuff and then probably just do that for hours today. Amazing. So. It's good to hear from you again, though. And yeah, yeah like best of luck on the run. I, I you know, I'm, I am a Moki fan regardless of what game you're playing, so... Thank yeah, you. knock kitten like knock him out of the park. You got this. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm down for next week Friday, and uh, yeah, I'll be starting to grind a bunch. So amazing. Yeah. Talk soon, Curtis. Till next time. Yep. See ya.